Dean peels away to his right, Carruthers in the middle. Oh, what a fantastic <laughs> Hey up troops, A Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to look at how to set up Oregon again but for 2024. So I don't know if any of you saw the video I did over a year ago, probably a year and a half ago even now maybe when it came to setting up Oregon. We're going to go over every single site again, all four sites for Oregon because times have changed. I actually changed the way that I hold trophy from Attic now, I've also changed the way that I hold big window from Attic. I've also changed the way that I play Albo. Now, Smoke doesn't have a shield. I still do play Smoke, but I do it slightly different. So it's well worth going over all four sites again. Just, just as a bit of a fact from my point of view, from my personal opinion, the best sites go basements, top four, meeting kitchen, meeting dining, and they're in order as well. Basements, the best, then top four, meeting kitchen, then meeting dining. So they're the way you should play them, in my opinion. I've actually recorded them slightly differently in this one, but... They're the strongest four sites. That's enough waffling. I've had enough. Let's get stuck into it. First things first, shoot the radio. Right, that is genuinely the first thing you should do on the upstairs site on Oregon. Right then. So I've done the reinforcements um, already. I've only used four because there's some areas of the map that we're going to talk about quickly. Um, but then obviously we'll do use the rest of the reinforcements as we go. There is only two more we need to use. You need to use a total of six, but it depends how you want to set the site up. First thing I want to talk about is this main breach. Now, what you see in the pro in Pro League is a rotate that is used here right at the very start of the round. You put it right up, um, up against the left-hand side of the wall. So if anyone's on the door outside, they can't see the rotate from there. And what you do with this rotate is you wait here early in the round and you try and get a couple of drones or just put some pressure onto this door early in the round and you can back off and re reinforce. Or you can play mute and you can put a mute jammer there and you can put a mute jammer here and you can play in here. And they can't drone you because your mute jammers are going to stop the drones. You're going to need a couple of ADSs on that wall, no doubt. It's a very dangerous place to play, but you can potentially kill the enemy's hard breach because generally a Sabana Thermite are going to come to this area here to open this wall. If you can get a pick onto them at the start of the round and then back up through here and reinforce, it would be insane. But it's a dangerous place to play. And of course, if you die here, it means that this hole is going to be in the wall. But the idea or the, the ideal scenario is you get a couple of drones, back off and reinforce. So that leaves the main wall fully reinforced. Now, one thing we can show you is I just need to find where it is below. Uh, there it is. Now, you can actually impact trick this wall. And what you need to do is you need to throw an impact grenade underneath here onto the fan. And the fan is actually, the like if we stand here, you can see the fan is actually the other side of the wall. You can impact trick this wall by throwing an impact trick onto that fan and it'll explode through the floor on the other side of the wall, destroying any hard breach that's on the other side. So you can impact trick this wall as well. Of course, you could play underneath, down in classroom and get things off the wall from underneath as well, which is also viable. The next area that we're going to talk about is here in Trophy. Now, this line of sight is made all the time because it's what you see in Pro League. I know I've just talked about that rotate over here being in Pro League, but what you see in Pro League isn't always the best thing for ranked, and I actually don't like these holes here at all. These holes are so you can hold the master door like this. And if you're playing that master door, and you're going to hold that door, then fine, make these holes, and then maybe reinforce later in the round if you need to. But what ends up happening is the person in Attic who will be playing around here because they're trying to stop people coming from Attic, they're trying to hold the breach from here as well. You can hold white stairs on an angle from there. There's going to be a rotate here that you can go through as well. Like, this is a busy area, but what always happens when you make these head holes is an attacker will make the way up main stairs. They'll hold this angle here, and now you can see the rotate into kids. So now you can't get through that rotate either if someone's at the top of the stairs here. I don't think it works very well in ranked. Personally, for me, get that reinforced. Obviously, it's up to you. I've shown you why you do it. It's because you can hold um, the master bulk door and you can hold top main stairs from here. For me, it's not a lot of use because this wall in Attic gets open nearly all the time anyway. So playing in this position here is not viable. You end up having to be here to hold on to this. And by the time you're looking here, you're about to get smoke from that area there. So for me, I don't like it. Get it reinforced. But again, I aren't your boss. You can do whatever you like and makes you feel comfortable. So we reinforce the two main breach walls, one, two. We reinforce the trophy walls, one, two. And as you can see at the other end, we reinforce the Attic walls, one and two. Always open the attic hatch. There's, there's never a bad reason to open the attic hatch. It gives you two options. One is that you can, if you're playing in attic and you feel a bit of pressure coming whichever direction, 
You can dip out if you want to. But the other thing you can do is if you've got any roamers below who've managed to find their way into meeting, um, they can hold this angle here for anyone pushing through Attic. You, you have to be in a very, very high rank for people on attack to notice that the hatch is open and they might get a shot from below. I would say if you're playing in Emerald and below, you could generally get a free pick from you whenever anyone pushes through Attic. Every, see this like wooden pile here? Everybody goes around to the side of that anyway. You can see the edge of the pile there, so you can hold an angle like this. It's an absolute free kill. So always open the Attic Hatch. Something else you can do from the Attic Hatch as well, if I just nip back up there very quickly. All in one take. I'm not cutting this out of the video. Enjoy the trip around Oregon. You can also then hold the meeting door if you want. If this wall's still closed, you can hold the meeting door. Sometimes you'll find an ash will come through this direction here because they want to ash this uh, wall from, sorry, this floor from below to get rid of the denial. You can also hold that from here as well. The next area we're going to look at is this wall here. Now, there is always, always going to be a rotate there. I personally like making a standing rotate. I see no benefit for a crouch rotate. It just makes things more awkward when you want to try and get through. A little line of sight you can make, which is handy, is directly here. You've then got the door that goes to green corridor from kitchen underneath. And you'll quite often get people pushing through big tower, coming through kitchen because they want to go around to the bottom of white stairs. Hold this here. You'll get a free kill one out of three games. This wall is interesting because a lot of people reinforce this side as well. There's not a great deal of importance about doing that apart from... If you don't reinforce it, I don't really want to open that because it'll ruin the rest of the setup. But you can see big tower, uh, sorry, big window is through here, double window. And you can see if you don't reinforce that, it, it means that they could uh, um, put pressure on from big window all the way into attic. But don't forget, things work both ways. I like to make a hole like this. And it means I can now, from behind the bomb, also hold big window here. So all of a sudden, this power position here is holding the breach. It's holding the games window. It's holding trophy. It's holding attic, maybe trophy from here as well if you've got the whole uh, the head holes and big window. It is such an incredibly good position. There's just a lot going on when you play there. So you can reinforce this wall. I understand if you do. I personally don't like doing it. I like having an angle onto big window from there. All right, what do we do at big window? So we make feet holes along the right hand side of this wall. And then a small rotate on the end. It only needs to be big enough just to sneak through. That's perfect. So from here now, we can hold the jump in. It's a one-way angle because when they jump in the window, they aren't going to be able to see you. Of course, don't shoot their ankles when they jump in. When you see their ankles, you know the head's going to be here. So just hold this, watching for any drones that come in or any candalas if you can shoot them before they go off, etc., etc. But you can hold that from there. Remember, when you're playing here, your feet are absolutely exposed under this bed. So what I tend to do if I want to attack... When I prone drop here and get a kill by people standing behind that bed, it happens all the time. If you drop off this and press prone before you land, you'll land in prone. And you can get kills there by shooting people's ankles. So whenever you're playing this area as a defender, you've got to make sure that you're just constantly watching that or you're standing somewhere that's not behind the bed because obviously you can't fire back there. So yeah, we're going to hold big window from here. The other thing is around big window is you can make holes for the jumping. You should always do this. This doesn't benefit the attackers whatsoever, and you should always make holes for the jump in, especially when you're playing a shotgun operator. Let's just say you are a bandit, and you know they're going to jump in big window, and you've got an MP7, and you might have a C4, but you don't really want to be using C4 to make a line of sight, or you're an operator that hasn't got the means of making holes in the floor. As the operator with a shotgun, lesion, smoke, castle, whoever you're playing mute, needs to make these holes. Also make these holes... This now covers bottom wire. So let's go downstairs and have a quick look at that. Don't forget, vertical holes work both ways. So that's the, the holes that you can see onto bottom white and to cover bottom white window. But don't forget, as an attacker, if you get to here and you see these holes, absolutely peek this like that. And you're probably going to get someone's face right in the middle of the, uh, the floor there. The other holes were for security, which are in here. This is for big window. So now from here, you can just hold anyone jumping in the big window. Obviously, of course, there's only one way in and one way out of this room, so just be careful you don't get droned or stuck in there. Other than that, the areas that you need to be concerned about in terms of default plants is this area here. You know what works here really, really well is a frost mat. A frost mat in this area works super well because nobody drones it and the hard breach support player just runs through and tries to plant and will genuinely will run into a frost mat there. Or they tend to jump on here, like go like this and then fall into the frost mat. It really does work that well. 
Another good option is to put a Valkyrie camera on the inside of this light here. That gives you a really good view of the area. You can see that the light shade is like kind of see-through at the top. So when you put the camera here, you can actually see through the back of it to look at the breach as well. It's really, really good Valkyrie cam. But this is where the plant's going to usually aim to go down. The plant can also go down here. And the plant generally will also go down over here if they jump in big window. So they're the three areas you've got to concern yourself about. That's how I set it up. Don't use a lot of reinforcements. We've got four left. Remember, the first thing to do is shoot the radio. And that's what I do on top four. Welcome to basement. We've used five reinforcements. We've used one here. We've used one here. And then we've got the freezer hatch reinforced. The laundry hatch reinforced. And finally, the e-box hatch also reinforced. Right, in terms of lines of sights and rotates, we want to make a rotate here. Only needs to be a crouch rotate, although because making rotates in these walls is an absolute pleasure, you can usually just walk through the ones that you think are going to be crouch rotates. Rotate here. This, this doubles up as two things. One, it doubles up as an escape route if someone gets trapped in small box. Remember, this is small box. That, that's e-box. So electrical box, and this is small box. People also call it supply or supply box as well. Generally call it small box. But that acts as a way out for um, defenders if they get stuck in here. And also, when you make the lines of sight, make the lines of sight for freezer, it also means that you can be back here. And you can hold that grey bar there, if you can see the grey strip. That's the bottom of freezer stairs. So now you can hold the bottom of freezer stairs from here, and bob across to there, and then peek you from there as well. Then want to be making a line of sight here, or just a couple of holes. It doesn't have to be all the way across. A line of sight here. And that pretty much sums up the lines of sight and rotates. Now, you can reinforce these two walls. There's nothing wrong with that. And the reason you do that is because this here is a real power position. You can hold the stairs. You can hold the drop if anyone drops. And you can also hold blue double door. So if these two walls are left soft, what good teams will do is open the hatch and then make like lines of sight across here using ash or whoever they use to make holes in this wall. And it means that a defender can no longer stand here, which is a power position. So I understand if you want to reinforce these. However, what I also like to do is make a line of sight from here to here. And it means that if you're playing elbow and nobody pushes blue from here, now you can at least be useful holding big stairs. So it depends how you want to play a big stairs, big tower stairs. So if nobody is playing here, I would leave these soft and make this hole. Um, it also means that if you're here, you can pick blue double door from this side as well. So you can pick like that side and then pick that side. Depends how you want to play. Um, again, it also depends on your elo. If you're in champ and maybe diamond elo, this hatch gets open and then this wall gets shot through. So anyone standing here just gets splattered across that wall. So the places you want to be holding is, of course, elbow. You'll notice... Oh, I haven't made the rotate here. That's embarrassing. Making rotates in these walls is a literal dream. You absolutely want to be holding elbow. This is elbow here. People say, oh, if you shoot out the blue um, tops on the floor, it means that you hear better sound. Yes, it does, but it also takes about two weeks to shoot all of this out. Like, um, I just used four shotgun shells, so I'm going to use four, eight... 12, 16, 20, 25 shotgun shells to shoot out this bit of floor. Not worth doing, in my opinion. You'll hear the sound difference. Just listen to me running on the concrete, then listen to me running on the blue. You see how it's muffled? But really, does it make that much difference to start shooting that out? I don't think it does. It's a bit of a waste of time, in my humble opinion. But put a prox on this door and hold elbow like you used to behind a shield. You'd never really use the shield anyway. Everyone just used to wide peek it away from the shield. A beautiful thing to do, and I've got so many clips of me doing this because I love doing it, is people come down into blue and then just sit behind barrels and drone. So just throw a smoke there, set the smoke off, and when they run out of blue, it's a free kill as they run out. I absolutely love doing that. So that's playing elbow. Now, a lot of people also reinforce this wall. And then when they lose elbow control, they'll come back through and reinforce this wall. Meaning this is um, doubly reinforced and completely reinforced off, which is fine. You absolutely can do it that way. I actually like just making a shotgun hole here, and it means I can now hold elbow. But it also means if someone pushes laundry, I can now hold laundry from here as well. Generally, the push doesn't come from blue and laundry. It normally comes blue early and then comes like freezer. You can still hold a bit of freezer here as well. But being able to hold laundry from here is absolutely invaluable because it's a it can be a tough place to hold, um, especially from small box here. 
So if you want to reinforce this wall and then reinforce this wall as well, you absolutely can. Um, I don't like doing that. I would rather just like fight and die or at least die trying. Um, but I get if you want to reinforce off and then retreat a little bit and give that space up, no problem. Um, in E-Box, again, like we said, a small box, sorry, even I just got it wrong then, I do it all the time. Like we said, we can hold Freezer, we can also hold Laundry from here, make a tiny little punch hole right next to the wall. You can also hold Laundry as soon as they come in. When they come through that Laundry door there, the first place they're going to look is this massive hole in the wall. They're not going to be looking down at this um, ratty little punch hole, so that works quite well as well. In terms of Freezer... Um, don't make that rotatable. I just did that so I didn't have to run around. In terms of freezer, definitely actively play freezer. So if you've got especially a shotgun, a smoke is absolutely perfect. I don't know if any of you watch Pro League, but there used to be a player for Elevate. Up oh, the Elevator. Up uh, oh, the Elevator? Up oh, the Elevator. I used to be a content creator for Elevate. Absolutely fantastic. Up oh, Justin. And um, up oh, Sparks. Um, two great people from Elevate. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about Elevate is... Um, Used to be a player called Sapper, who still now plays for a different team. They've just... Has he got a Galida Esports? I think they've just formed a team. Anyway, Sapper plays freezer stairs like you've never seen before. He was absolutely incredible. Smoke gives you so many options. Generally, when you're in pro play, the push comes from freezer and laundry more than it does blue. Um, it still happens in, in um, freezer and blue, though. Sorry, still happens in freezer and ranked. But you can now hold freezer here with smoke so easily. Like, this shotgun's winning any fight at close range. You've got the prox mine to let you know when they're there. And obviously, you've got the smokes you can throw just to the top of the stairs to stop them coming in. Remember, even if you throw it there, it's going to fill this area with toxic vape gas. And basically, what you can do as well is just get two or three drones and then retreat and come down. Just remember that if they open the hatch, your cutoff is pretty much ruined. So if they if you hear them opening the hatch, like maybe smoke it, try and get a bit of dr um, try and destroy one more drone, and try and retreat. Otherwise, you're stuck here and you're gonna have to play the hatch and the stairs as well. But you should definitely play actively play freezer. Don't start peeking it aggressively. Don't start doing this or doing this. But just definitely kill a couple of drones and then make your way back down. If you want to be a bit more aggressive, you can barricade this. And if you go prone on the stairs, you can peek um, Z, or I call it Z because I'm not from America. Though That's the Z area there, so you can hold Z from this kind of angle. You can see the angle he can get around there. That's almost looking a split door. But it's a bit ratty because you're prone in under the door. So that's freezer. In terms of laundry, not the easiest place to hold, but I would recommend, again, if you know the push is coming laundry, try and kill a few drones on the stairs, move back. If you hear the hatch opening, definitely move back, otherwise you're not going to be able to get out. But you can play laundry from here. Obviously, you've got to watch freezer as well. Or, of course, you can play laundry from small box and smoke off the door in and what have you. That's the way I play downstairs. I do think slightly differently with this wall by not reinforcing it. And I think you should definitely be more active on freezer stairs and laundry stairs where you can. If you think about this site, there's blue which is one, big tower stairs, which is two, freezer, which is three, and laundry, which is four. That means you've got four players downstairs watching those four areas and a fifth player upstairs roaming, ideally a soulless destroying drones, etc. So what I hate when you're playing downstairs, right, is you always get one of your teammates who goes, oh, they're on big tower stairs. Well, yeah, they probably are because that's a decent way to push down into the site. But if you've got one, two, three, four ways down and you've got five players, there's no reason to not have a player looking at each of those four areas. Also, these head holes here that I haven't mentioned are, of course, just to put pressure onto tower stairs so they can't just walk down for free. Let me just set the smoke off. Of course, playing smoke as well, you can smoke tower stairs from here as well. Smoke is such a goated operator on this site. He's absolutely class. We haven't mentioned these head holes, but I think this is fairly obvious. He's for peeking into blue. You can get a bit ratty again, like we talked about on the small box door. You can do that here. When they first come down there, the first thing they're going to be looking at are these head holes, so you can get away with a cheeky rat angle. Of course, if they've droned it and they see your punch hole, run away. But that's pretty much how I play downstairs. Hope that helps. So we're on to kitchen and meeting now, which is a way better site than what everybody else plays, which is kitchen and dining. Kitchen dining is a difficult site to hold. And it, it, if honestly, it's one of the worst sites I feel in ranked, but everybody plays this site third rather than kitchen meeting. Kitchen meeting is like a little bit more difficult to learn how to play, but when you learn how to play it, it's way, way easier. So reinforcements, we've got the right hand side at the top there. Why do we do that? We make feet holes along here, and it means from here, you can now watch the walk in from green. It also means you can hold attic stairs. Uh, sorry, basement stairs if you need to. Also means that if they're opening this wall, you play an operator here with impacts. They can come up here. An impact trick here, or they can be stand down here. An impact trick there. 
and it enables them to stop the, the hard breach that's going on. You also want to open this hatch. And if you lose sight control and you've got a C4, a C4, everyone tries to plant on the stage generally, and a C4 up and over that table will generally land on its mark. In terms of the kitchen area, you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely need some information here. A prox mine is fine, but what happens sometimes is somebody rushes this door, runs down here, and gets control of the kitchen straight away. Early in the round, you've got to have somebody here holding this and holding this. Obviously, you've got to watch for the small tower um, entrance down at the bottom, though, as well. So, ideally, someone down there as well. You want to rotate between the sides, between kitchen here, and then you want to rotate here. Only a small one. And you want a main rotate here as well. Now, I'll... A lot of what's going to go on in this site actually goes on upstairs. So that's what you want to set up downstairs. Remember, all of this here is the kids' area, basically, upstairs. And then this area here is the attic area upstairs. So a lot of the holding that we're going to do is above on this site. So let's just nip upstairs quickly. We've used two more reinforcements here. We've shot the radio. And basically, upstairs, you're going to set this... Wait, have we shot the radio? Yeah, we have. We're also we're going to set this up essentially like how we set it up when we're defending upstairs. You're going to want to make these holes. You're definitely going to want to make this hole to hold that door. And we're also going to want to hold big window. You don't necessarily need to make the rotate this time because you're going to hold big window and then back off. And when you're in attic, you're going to want to open this hatch and you're definitely going to want to reinforce these walls. Now, what's really useful here is a Cade. Now, Cade's useful here because these two walls are directly above these two walls. So you can throw your Cade here and it'll reinforce, uh, electrify these two walls and whichever one of these two walls that you reinforce, even if you do both, which I don't recommend, but even if you do, um, it'll get those two walls as well. So Cade's super useful up here. This angle is tremendous, stopping anyone coming through there. Obviously, you can watch the walkthrough for anyone coming through if they get this breach open. You've just got to be super careful of anyone pushing you from behind there or here. This is why we reinforce these two walls, though, because if you didn't reinforce those two walls, an attacker could just come straight into Master Bedroom, shoot through this wall to make a hole, and cut off the entirety of Attic, which obviously we don't want. The other thing you've got to be well aware of when you're playing this site is a push from Garage, making a hard breach hole here. And then just planting tucked right in the wall here, like really, really quickly. Sometimes you'll see a Monty with hard breach charges, like hard breach here, come in, put his back so the shield's facing over there, plant in the corner here and get away with it. It works quite well. So you've got to be aware of that. So from here, you definitely want to have someone at the back of uh, meeting, holding this area here, holding that area. This is a real power position, tucked in here. Don't stand in front of the drone hole, but you can tuck in here. Anyone pushing attic, you can cover. Obviously, anyone who's pushing on stage, you can cover. Um, C4s over the top of here work really, really well. You've got to cover, as I say, green corridor at the start of the round. And you've also got to watch for the lurk that de oh, nearly always comes through small tower. Having a player playing around showers, like make a rotate here. Just have a player playing around showers, destroying drones at the start of the round. And then if they need to, they can back off through here. Oh, watch out. And go back into kitchen. Just bear in mind, you've got to have that player upstairs as well because the vert here is immense. Obviously, the hatch, um, you've got to make sure you cover everything off because all they need to do upstairs, if you give control of kids straight away, straight away, they make vertical here to watch this rotate, vertical here or vertical there to watch these rotates. They can then drop the hatch, plant here, and you can't deny the plant because you're going to come through that rotate or through this door and get shot from above. But I personally think this site is way, way better than Kitchen Meeting. I will do... Uh, sorry, Kitchen Meeting. This is Kitchen Meeting. I think it's way, way better than Kitchen Dining. We will talk about Kitchen Dining next, and I'll tell you why I think it's rubbish. Um, but we'll, I'm going to get more into why not to play this site rather than how to defend it, even though I'll still talk about how to defend it, obviously. Um, but yeah, definitely play Kitchen... Well, I say play Kitchen Meeting. Learn Kitchen Meeting first. It's, if you're in solo queue, you're struggling because everyone's going to play Kitchen Dining. But if you're in a stack of three or more, at least, maybe even two or more, um, then yeah, get, definitely get on Kitchen Meeting. So we've come to one of the worst sites in Ranked, in my humble opinion. It's Kitchen Dine in Oregon. I think this site is absolutely dreadful. I'll show you how to defend it, and then I'll tell you why I think it's dreadful, and how you can try and 
not let it be as dreadful. Or you can try and counter things. In terms of reinforcements, we've used six, although we will use more upstairs. So we've used two at the back here, from kitchen to meeting. One from kitchen to security. Never reinforce this wall, ever, ever, ever. And we've used two here, which is four and five. And then the sixth one is the right-hand side shower wall when you're looking from showers out. So when you're looking showers out, the right-hand side. So in terms of lines of sights and rotate, head holes here. Rotate here, or you can make head holes as well. I prefer a rotate, and then a rotate here. Now, this rotate needs to be on this side of the wall, not that side of the wall, because the other side of the wall can be held from the window. So you don't want to be holding, rotating that side of the wall. It needs to be tucked in here. That way, if you need to, you can rotate out of here, tuck in tight to the wall so you won't be seen by the window, and make your way around here if you need to. The whole point of this sort of setup in showers is to hold showers. It's actually a bit of a fortress. There's no vertical. You can't be shot from above. You've got this window to worry about, and then obviously all the small tower, the door here and the window here. And then you can also hold, if they cross you there, you can also hold on to here as well. It's a really strong place to hold. I recommend a Wamai in here so you can't get moved from flashes and throwables. Just chuck all your Wamais into the corner here or down here and just use these lockers as cover. Really fun place to play, although it's busy, so make sure you have your gunner in this location. In terms of small tower, I'm only going to touch on it quickly when it comes to defending. I do recommend you hold small tower. Again, not an enjoyable... Well, it is actually an enjoyable place to play because it's very busy, but you're going to get... You're probably going to die... And you're going to have two or three people push you. One from this window, one from this window, and one from below, likely. But what you can do, if you ever watched Leon Gids when he played for, I think it was Rogue before they became Koi, he held um, Small Tower and Pro League using his army by putting in his army barrier here, and then his army barrier here, and just playing this area. Peeking around the his armies to shoot down here and to cover this area, you're definitely going to need a couple of ADSs or a my magnet somewhere to protect you from nades. Um, you're probably going to get yinged out or flashed out at some point. But if you can knock a minute and a half, two minutes off the clock whilst you're playing here, maybe even get a kill as well if you're feeling fruity, it would be incredible. So, you also deny the thermite doing what every thermite does, which we're going to come on to shortly. In terms of upstairs, again, very similar setup to what we just did when we were defending meeting uh, and kitchen. So, upstairs again, remember all of kids... Oh, we haven't shut the radio. Hello? Remember, all of kids, this basically just covers kitchen all the way across. And then you've got um, dining, which is covered by small tower. So you do want to be playing up here. You can open this hatch. And you can open the very top of this wall here. And you can actually get a pixel onto... That's the top of the sofa there. So you'll quite often see people planting behind there. I recommend playing a castle up here, because you can just castle yourself into this area. Castle off top white. Castle off big window. And castle off games. Uh, trophy, sorry. And you can just sort of chill in here. Castling off top white can be a bit risky because if you ever need to rotate down, like you've you've castled yourself off. So think about that before you do it if you want to do that. Yeah, holding this angle with planting behind the sofa is a good place to hold. Right, so why is it a rubbish place to defend? Two reasons. One, Thermite can just go above in small tower and no one ever really holds small tower, so you get small tower for free. You can just hold small tower. Uh, sorry, Thermite goes in small tower. He places his thermite charge above this wall because it's a soft wall and it blows a hole into this wall straight away no matter what wall denial you put on here. Then from there, all you need to do is an attack. Oh, by the way, you definitely want head holes here. And that way from further back behind kitchen, you can hold if this breach is open or you can hold the door into small tower. Um... Once this breach is open as an attacker, all you need to do is smoke off these head holes and this door. And you can do that with one smoke that lands there. Obviously, we're playing attacker smoke here now, right? So that covers those. You can then tuck in here and plant. But if there's somebody on the hatch, they'll be able to see you. So if they're not playing the hatch, you can plant here for free almost immediately. The other thing that's good from Thermite's point of view for this site is if you attack from the other side, you can place a Thermite charge right here. And as you can see, that's the kitchen wall there that leads to a meeting room. So if we just nip downstairs to meeting. That thermite charge then goes off here. And it will open this wall. And what that means is then you do it the opposite way around. You smoke kitchen instead. I can't come through the wall. This is reinforced now, but... It makes a thermite hole here, and these boxes are just great for planting behind. So instead, you throw two smokes. One that side, one that side. 
jump this wall, tuck in behind here and plant. Obviously, you've got might be team upstairs covering you from various different angles. But it's just, there are two easy attacks from both sides of the map. I don't recommend playing this site. Yes, it's easier to learn how to defend. But it's actually harder to defend than if you were to be playing meeting and kitchen. So, definitely learn meeting. But that's what I'd do on this site. Although, I don't recommend playing here at all. So, there we have it. Oregon is a map that we play all the time in ranked. I must get it maybe... I don't know, what do you reckon? 15, 20% of the time, even though there's like 14, 15 maps or whatever it is in the pool. I get or Oregon so, so often. But it's a good map. It's a balanced map, and I enjoy it. I win it and lose it just as much. I don't feel like it's attacker or defender sided. That's the way I set sites up. I know when you're playing with different stacks, different people do different things. By all means, take that and do what you want with it. And also, by all means, say, actually, I don't set it up like this. I do this instead, and this is what I prefer. It's, of course, it's subjective. As long as you win the game, that's what matters. Thanks as always for getting involved with the video. I appreciate every single person that watches these. I really, really do. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and all the other good stuff that you can do with the video would really help me out. Thank you, thank you very much as always for getting involved. I appreciate whether you've watched it once, twice, 10 times, 100 times. Might be a bit much, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Even if it's for 10 seconds that you've watched it, I'm genuinely really, really grateful. Thanks very much for watching it, and we'll see you next time. Cheers!